This is the Bulls Chat Podcast. I am Joe Malone, and with me, the head coach, the general manager of the North Iowa Bulls, Todd Sandin. Coach, good morning, and uh, welcome. Good morning, Joe. Thank you. So, first four games of the season happening in rapid-fire succession up in uh, Blaine, Minnesota at the Super Rink. Three wins out of four games. Do you consider that a success? Oh, absolutely. Um, obviously, getting out of the gates with uh, with a win in the first game uh, sets you up pretty well to, to gather some positive momentum. But coming out of there three and one is uh, that's uh, a great effort by our boys. We're excited about it. Now, the one loss coming to Jamestown, which last time we talked, um, you said they didn't play because of the COVID regulations last year um, as a team. But I'm guessing those players were obviously somewhere else. They weren't just like sitting in an empty locker room. Yeah, yeah, of course. They were all playing somewhere else. And uh, looking at that game specifically, I mean, they got ripped the night before 7 nothing. So we knew we'd see a, a much different team the next day. And then they ended up ripping off three wins in a row, uh, you know, starting with us to finish the showcase. Now, do you always get a little apprehensive, or do you uh, do you feel like, oh man, this team's going to be angry coming in after after they get beat bad like that? Yeah, no, you you expect a huge pushback. I mean, these are all really good players, uh, experienced coaches, proud proud teams. So, and any time a, a team goes out and uh, gets a lick and put on them, you can expect them to come back with some snarl the next day. Uh, well, the Bulls, um, you were getting um, production from all across the board. Nine different players found the back of the net during the uh, first four games of the season up at the uh, Super Rink at the Showcase. Um, uh, some of the scoring leaders, uh, a trio with three goals each, Logan Dombrowski, uh, Ryan Coughlin, and uh, Greg Japchen as well. Um, pretty good, uh, Pretty good dispersion of goals, I think, nine players in four games. Yeah, and you're looking at with those goal leaders. I mean, two of them forwards, uh, one of them uh, defenseman and Greg Japson, and all of them veterans of the Amarillo team that, that made the move up here. So it, it's great to have that scoring spread out over the numbers of your lineup. But it's also it's also great to see veterans stepping up and being leaders in production. Now, I'm still trying to familiarize myself with the lineup. I'm sure after this weekend I'll have a better grasp of who's on what line, but um, are, are Logan and Ryan, are they on the same line at all? How often are they matching up with Greg? Are you just putting like a, a super squad out on the ice for a shift? Or? No, you, you know what? That that actually, they're not on the same line, Logan and Ryan. They're on two different lines, which um, obviously shows that, that we're going to have some depth in scoring with this group. I mean, you're getting it from a, a, a few different lines, and we did last weekend. Uh, and, and actually, I think Doc was pretty much role in our defenseman, uh, so to speak. Okay. Now, what are the pluses and minuses that you saw over the uh, first four games, things that after maybe game uh, three you were thinking about, you know what, before we leave here, I want to I want to get this improved? Well, well I think the probably the pluses, and, and you touched on it earlier before we got on the air, was the discipline of our team. Um, normally in the season, you have to dial back uh, and, and really be hard on, on the discipline. And our guys really did a great job of not putting themselves in, you know, penalty kill situations or, or you know, giving teams uh, extended number of power plays on the weekend, which that, that's always a concern early in the year. Um, so I think that's a big plus. I, I think the other big plus is, is the depth of the scoring. Um and I, I thought our goaltending was pretty good this weekend too. I mean, we, we had the one game where we gave up um, the the four goals, but the other the other three games were either one or two goal games. So, looking at that defensively and goaltending, it looks like we're in decent shape. And then getting scoring from the depth of your lineup, I mean, those are all pluses. Yeah. As far as anything that that we probably want to clean up, I, I think we're still evaluating that because I thought our guys did a great job last week. Now uh, we touched on you touched on it there. Um, a discipline lowest amount of penalty minutes out of uh, all the teams in the NAHL that have played four games so far. Uh, I believe St. Cloud's played two, so they've got a little bit less time to end up in the penalty box. But uh, that's got to make you happy and and feel good that you know I don't have to worry about uh, playing defense so much. I can do more offense on the ice with my team. Yeah, you know, and it it just shows a level of discipline in your group when you're not out running around taking penalties and you're not getting yourself out of position where you need to take a penalty to maybe stop a scoring chance. So 
kudos to our guys for having that dialed in. And it's it, as you know, for teams who go on um, playoff and championship runs, that discipline is critical down the stretch late in the season. Now, the first home games for the North Iowa Bulls will be Friday night and Saturday night against Aberdeen. Uh, Aberdeen was in for a couple of exhibition games, uh, a split in that one. And uh, what what do you expect to see from Aberdeen? Are are you expecting more of what you saw during the exhibition, or was that a lot of tinkering taking place? I think on both team sides, there there was a lot of tinkering, a lot of uh, evaluation going on in those exhibition games. So so I think we're 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 preparing for a team who did very well to showcase. Um, and in general, our division did very well to showcase. So we have to get ourselves ready for a couple hard-fought battles here on the home opening weekend. Now, one thing, too, I noticed on uh, Sunday, uh, the Mason City Toros had their exhibition contest, and uh, the Bulls were in the stands cheering on the Toros. Is that something you're going to encourage them to to do when they have uh, the off time to go and support the other team in town? You know, obviously I was there, too, uh, watching the Toros play and and doing some early season evaluation on their players. It's tremendous, the opportunity that we have here for, let's just call it 50 hockey players in town to to work together, support each other, and all of them hopefully coming out college hockey players. So the fact that they were there, we're certainly um, pleased with that and, and the support that they gave their uh, the Toros teammates and, and the, there were a lot of Toros up at the showcase too. So I think it's a, it's really a two, two way street here with both teams supporting each other, uh, you know, if and when they can. Uh, uh, the, the sort of whistling and, uh, uh, bench noise that you hear was, was doubled. <laughs> one <laughs> yeah. thing that I noticed, I'm like, man, the bench is loud. Oh wait, no, that's the bulls up in the stands acting just like they would on the bench. Okay. Yeah. Th- those guys are having a good time at that game as well. So uh, Bulls and Aberdeen Friday night and uh, Saturday night, 7.30 at the uh, Mason City Multipurpose Arena. Uh, Toros, they've got their first game on uh, Saturday afternoon and then Sunday for game number two. So it's a full weekend at the Mason City yeah. Arena. Yeah, you know, we're, we're looking forward to that. I mean, obviously, this is our first opportunity for a doubleheader on Saturday to kind of see, you know, does it work, how it works, um, just the dynamics of staffing it and fan attendance so we're we're hoping that people really come out and support both teams obviously we know we play in an amazing junior hockey town and um look forward to the support that we get but it's going to be a fun day especially saturday where you have both teams playing in the same day what's the over under on me uh getting the names right oh you're a pro joe you always get the names right Except once, no once during the there. exhibition game, I got it wrong, but I was super busy at that point in time, writing down uh, uh, goals and assists and trying to remember. It was it was nuts, but you know, it, for for the officials, for the players, for uh, the off ice staff, it, the exhibition game is a chance to work out those bugs uh, for all of us, right? Yeah. It, it's a it's a great little warm up for all of us. Uh, Todd, thank you so much. Uh, we will see you at the rink this weekend. Uh, we appreciate you being on the podcast. Awesome, Joe. Thank you so much for the opportunity. That is the head coach, general manager of the North Iowa Bulls, Todd Sandin, joining us here on the Bulls Chat Podcast.